Him and state your name, and if you can keep your comments to about two or three minutes, we'd appreciate it. So at this time, I'll turn it over to Darren Rice. Thank you, Dr. Stockton. Good evening, President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. It is my pleasure to present the district's first report. The School Financial Integrity Rating System of Texas, or first report, ensures that Texas public schools are held accountable for the quality of their financial management practices and that they improve on those practices. The system is designed to encourage Texas public schools to better manage their financial resources to provide the maximum allocation possible for direct instructional purposes. The school first rating is based upon an analysis of staff and student data reported for the 2015-2016 school year and budgetary and actual financial data for the fiscal year ended August 31st, 2016. The school first rating system rated the district based on scores received from 15 separate performance indicators. Each performance indicator was designed to assess the quality of the financial management of the, district, of the district's resources. Indicators 1 through 5 are pass fail, and indicators 6 through 15 are worth up to 10 points each, each for a maximum of 100 points. <clears throat> and these are the uh, scores that a district can achieve. Uh, Conroe Independent School District received a rating of A, superior, uh, scoring 100 out of 100 possible points. Uh, the superior rating is the state's highest, demonstrating the quality of Conroe ISD's financial management and reporting system. Now at this time we'll go through each of the 15 indicators. Number one, was the complete annual financial report or AFER and data submitted to the TEA within 30 days of the January 28th deadline for the district's fiscal year end date August 31st? And our answer is yes, it was submitted timely. <clears throat> 2A, was there an unmodified opinion in the AFER on the financial statements taken as a whole? And our answer is yes. 2B, did the external independent auditor report that the AFER was free of any instances of material weakness in internal controls over financial reporting and compliance for local, state, and federal funds? And our answer is yes. Number three, was the school district in compliance with the payment terms of all debt agreements at fiscal year end? Our answer is yes. Number four, did the school district make timely payments to the teacher's retirement system, Texas Workforce Commission, Internal Revenue Service, and other government agencies? Our answer is yes. Number five, was the total unrestricted net position balance in the governmental activities column in the statement of net assets greater than zero? Our answer is yes. Number six, was the number of days of cash on hand and current investments in the general fund for the school district sufficient to cover operating expenditures? And this is excluding facilities acquisition and construction. And our answer is yes, we had 106 days of cash on hand and to receive 10 points you had to have at least 90. <clears throat> Number seven, was the measure of current assets to current liabilities ratio for the school district sufficient to cover short-term debt? Our answer is yes. Our current ratio was 3.13, and the ratio needed to receive 10 points was 3.0. Number eight, was the ratio of long-term liabilities to total assets for the school district su sufficient to support long-term solvency? If the school district's change of students and membership over five years was 10% or more, then the school district passes this indicator. Our answer is yes, our membership increased by 10.8%. Number nine, did the school district's general fund revenues equal or exceed expenditures, once again excluding facilities acquisition and construction? Our answer is yes. Number 10, was the debt service coverage ratio sufficient to meet the required debt service? Our answer is yes, our ratio was 1.84 required ratio was 1.2. Number 11, was the school district's administrative cost ratio equal to or less than the threshold ratio? Our answer is yes. The acceptable administrative cost ratio is 0 0.0855. Our ratio was half that at 0 0.0402, so good to report that. <clears throat> Number 12, did the school district not have a 15% decline in the students to staff ratio over three years? total enrollment to total staff. If the student, student enrollment did not decrease, the school district will automatically pass this indicator. 
Our answer is yes, and enrollment increased by 3,230 students over these three years. Number 13, did the comparison of PEAMS data to like information in the AFR result in an aggregate variance of less than 3% of all expenditures by function? Our answer is yes, we had 0% variance. Number 14, did the external independent auditor indicate that the AFR was free of any instances of material noncompliance for grants, contracts, and laws related to local, state, and federal funds? And our answer is yes. And the final indicator, did the school district not receive an adjusted repayment schedule for more than one fiscal year for an overallocation of foundation school program funds as a result of a financial hardship? And that is yes. The first report, along with the additional required disclosures that include the superintendent's contract and the school's first annual financial management report, can be located on the district's transparency website at the link listed below. Okay, this time, if anyone have any comments, please come to the podium. All right, seeing no takers, that concludes our uh, public hearing. All right. Call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with Texas Opens Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. The time is now 6.07. Please join me in rising while Mr. Moore leads us in the invocation. If you're so inclined, would you please bow with me? God of all creation, we pause this evening to stand in your presence and pray for your guidance upon those gathered here. We pray that your spirit would be amongst us to help us make decisions that are in line with your will for our students, for our staff, and for our community. Lord, as we enter this holiday season, regardless of our traditions and our, our faith that we follow, we pray that you would help us all find a meaning and a purpose deeper than ourselves. That you would help us to find a way to live in peace and harmony with our fellow humans. Lord, we pray now uh, as we uh, send our students out and our staff uh, to go their various ways over these coming weeks, that your hand of protection would be upon them, that they would find a time of refreshment and renewal and return safely to us to finish out the school year. It's in your holy name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, tonight we have with us from the Oak Ridge JORTC um, American Flag Commander Cadet Martin, Texas Flag Cadet Zyman, Right Guard Cadet Miracle, and Left Guard Cadet Ames, and they are led by Sergeant Twine. Please join us for the presentation of colors and the pledge led by Mr. Hubert. Uh, peace. Peace. Colors. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now the Texas flag. Honor to the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. I Thank you very much. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Scott Free, do we have anyone signed up for citizen participation? We do not. All right. Item three, consent agenda. I have not heard any uh, requests to remove any items. All right. We approve consent agenda. Second. All those in favor? Consent agenda is approved. Item 4A, receive capital improvement update. Ms. Dr. Stockton. All right, Ms. Foster, if you'll come and present that information, please. Good evening, President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. It's my pleasure to present for you an update on our capital improvements that we have underway throughout the district. I'm going to start <coughs> with our safety and security project. We're currently in phase two of a four-phase project 
I'm happy to report we're completing phase two as we speak. So over the Christmas holidays, we'll have phase two wrapped up. And so there won't be a report for January. Uh, you get your obligatory picture of one of our vestibules that we've done. So, but in the spring, so January and February, we're working with our security uh, department and our design engineers to bring you phase three of this project, uh, which should be in the March timeframe. So we'll be back to ask for your approval to proceed with the next phase in the very near future. At Grand Oaks High School, uh, Grand Oaks is scheduled to open in August of 2018. It is currently on schedule, as you can see from this overhead picture here. The view of the site, the practice fields, things of that nature are coming together very nicely. You can see the grass growing on the fields, the detention areas are, are being completed, the exterior uh, driveways and things of that nature are now connecting to the Grand Parkway as we get near the completion of that project. Inside, we're working the finishes from the top floor down. So what we're looking at is the uh, science labs on the third floor of the academic wing of the building. So we're working there. We worked with our maintenance department to do above ceiling cover-ups on two of those floors today. So that project is proceeding nicely on the interior as well. At Catherine Johnson Clark Intermediate, I'm happy to report that project is on schedule as well, scheduled to open in August of 2018. So it, it mirrors, it's beginning to mirror uh, Grand Oaks very much as we push towards uh, the uh, August deadline to get this ready for students. It is on schedule, as I said, as you can see from the overhead picture, many of the driveways and all the other features of the site are coming together. The building itself on the interior is beginning to take shape, so you can see the building systems, the building interior partitions, walls, things of that nature all coming together. On the outside of the building, you're starting to see the exterior finishes, uh, so you can get a really get a feel for what the building looks like in the neighborhood as you drive by today. At Connor High School, where we're in doing an addition in order to facilitate a major renovation of the main campus, uh, we're looking at the structure for the central plant, which is where the, the heartbeat of our mechanical system that will feed the new addition as well as the main building as we work through that renovation project. And the structure for the new addition is, is nearing complete. The large crane left us uh, at the end of last week, so now they're working with a much smaller crane to, crane to finish that erection of that structure. And over the Christmas holidays, we'll be working on the second floor slab, second floor concrete, working our way to the top of that building to top it out. It is also on schedule, and is scheduled. we're scheduled to be on that campus through December of 2019. And that is our update. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Any comments, questions? I have a question for you. Uh, just curious, because um, I've heard some, some horror stories from people about Hurricane Harvey. Harvey, a lot of people having a lot of construction going on right now, and that that the cost of material, and cost of labor has kind of gone up. Can you speak to that at all? Are, are we experiencing any of that with our projects? Are you are you seeing any deadlines lengthened because the, the, the crews moving to do other jobs or anything like that? Uh, we haven't yet at this point. We're, we're taking. We took bids on a project a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we anticipated budget issues on it. Uh, that was at Austin Elementary, which we'll be bringing in the future for board approval. Uh, and as we've been working through that project with the contractor and with the design team, we haven't run into any indicators that Harvey-related shortages are, are part of our budget uh, issues there. We took bids on our new junior high school, which, again, comes out of a future board meeting for approval. We took bids on it today. Mm -hmm. The contractor is compiling all those bids now, so I'll have a better idea where we landed tomorrow. Uh, it wasn't finished before we left our office to come here for this meeting. But the indicators we saw while we were there weren't out of line. I mean, drywall is one we're, we're really worried about. Uh, drywall didn't seem to be affected by it. The bids, we, didn't, we got several bids. We weren't on I mean, a project today where we were anticipating we might see some empty spots. We received over 400 bids, over 50 trades. Okay. I mean, so we're looking at good participation. The prices looked good overall. Um, so I don't think we're going to have a huge, uh, it might be a small effect, but not a, not a detrimental effect. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> uh, 5A, consider award of RFP 17-04-05, South County Sports Facilities Naming Rights. Dr. Stockton. Hey, Darren Rice, if you'll come and present uh, that item and then the next item after that. Yes, good evening again, President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. Tonight, we are recommending that the Board of Trustees consider awarding RFB 17-04-05 South County Sports Facility Naming Rights to Wood Forest National Bank for the stadium only for $1,100,000. In February of 2007, the Board of Trustees approved a stadium naming rights agreement with Wood Forest National Bank. 
This agreement expires on August 31st, 2018. The district prepared a request for proposal that was released to the district's e online e-bidding system on Wednesday, October 18th, 2017. Seeking proposals from businesses interested in purchasing the rights to name the stadium and the natatorium. The proposal was also advertised three times in the Courier, once in the Villager, and also on the district's website. 113 vendors were invited to participate. Three responded, receiving two of those as no bids. The district anticipates that any contract awarded pursuant to this RFP to be in effect for a negotiated period of up to 10 years from the date of the award with the possibility of extending the contract for additional terms. At this time, I recommend your approval. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. Second. All right. Um, any discussion on this? Yes, discussion. You had three proposals, three bids, and two of them didn't come back at all with final bids or Correct. commitment. Do we know why? When we say no bids, <laughs> we, we, we put the bids out to the, to the 113 uh, separate vendors and then others can come to our website and, and apply when they look at it they look at the bid they just go through the and there's a button either you're gonna bid or it's just no bid we don't ask for really an explanation so they can just click no bid that they they reviewed the, the bid and they just decided to no bid the item so 113 showed interest well 113 is what we sent, we sent emails to we showed interest in them, them. <laughs> We cast, we cast a wide net out there. Three, wide, and yes, three of them three viewed it. it. I recently spoke to a superintendent of a similar sized district in the area, and they had a very similar response. Um, but I will tell you that we are thrilled to make the recommendation uh, for Wood Forest Bank Stadium. That was my question. I was just curious. Yeah. I'm good. All right. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Opposition and abstentions. Abstain. All right. Item 5B, financial reports. Mr. Rice. Good evening. Tonight we'll look at the financial statements for the district for the month of November. Uh, these statements uh, will include the general fund, debt service, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. The first statement we'll look at this evening is the balance sheet. And the balance sheet includes our assets, our liabilities, and our fund balance. And each month, we like to look at our cash and investments. And once again, we'll concentrate on the general fund. Currently, we have cash on hand of $13,300. We have bank deposits of a little over $2 million. We have investments in the state pools of $55.5 million. We have our short-term short investments less than the year, $59.4 million. Uh, longer term investments with TCG Investment Advisors of $51.7 million for total cash and investments of $168.6 million. We can go ahead and take a look at our property tax collections, but we're just early in the you know, property tax bill just went out. So we're right in the same ballpark as where we were at this time last year. Next statement we'll look at this evening is the income statement. The income statement includes our revenues and expenditures. And our revenues are broken down into three categories local and intermediate sources, which includes tax collections, state program revenues, and federal program revenues. And we can also take a look uh, at our expenditures. We can look at those year to date by major category. We can see in the general fund, payroll is our largest expenditure. Debt service is debt service. Child nutrition is supplies and materials. And it's contracted services and self-funded insurance. Uh, this is our projected general fund balance increase for the year right now. It's at $14.9 million, but that does not include yet the transfer into debt service. So this is very preliminary at this point. This is our 2015 bond referendum status update. Our grand total funding was $520.2 million. That includes the $33 million that the board transferred into the capital projects fund. Uh, we currently have a project forecast of the complete bond referendum of $514.8 million, leaving us with a contingency at this point of $5.4 million. Good news to report once again on our self-funded insurance plan. Uh, total revenues for the year, a little over $12 million. Our expenses are currently at about $9.7 million. That's leaving us revenue over expenses of about $2.3 million, so good, good results there. 
Uh, also, our participation in our wellness centers have really picked up. Mm -hmm. um, 542 in the month of November, total of 1,526 so far uh, visiting the center. So that's great news. You guys declined a bunch of claims or what? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I actually, just 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 to give you a little. I'm just. I know you're not. I'm just. Okay, investments for the month of November. Our par value was two hundred ninety-four point four million dollars. Um, our pools are yearn, uh, yielding about one point two seven percent. Our short-term investments. That's the ones less than a year. One point four five percent. Our longer-term investments with TCG Investment Advisors at one point two four percent leaving our combined portfolio with a WAM of 98 days, yielding 1.33%, and our benchmark, which is the 90-day T-bill, has moved all the way up to 1.25%. Mm -hmm. And thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Thank you, Mr. Rice. Just be sure to remind you when our insurance comes due, when we renew it next year, I'll remind them of that overage, <laughs> 2.2 million overage. Um, we're going to move to legal uh, item A so that we can finish that up before going to executive session. So uh, on item A, Board of Trustees uh, end of year continuing education announcement, um, all members of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees have completed the training required by law. And then item 8B, receive information about local policy manual update. 109. Yes, a fascinating update that I know y'all poured over in that 900 page um, board book that you got. Um, just some of the highlights, you know, the vantage points does summarize what the local policies in there very well. Uh, some of the big ones were the bullying policy. Obviously, you know, the state changed, um, expanded it, and then that new policy incorporates those changes in it. Um, then Senate Bill 7 was the, the law that was very expansive, dealing with educator misconduct and reports relating to sexual misconduct between educators and students. And so you'll see that throughout all the policies, the local policies, the implementation of that particular bill. And the other one that was um, uh, had, was tweaked, you know, from last session they passed the special ed camera bill. They've tweaked that a little bit more. Nothing really changes a great deal. They've kind of... Uh, modify the definitions or who can ask for uh, a camera in the classroom. We don't have to keep the videos quite as long as we did before. I think it was an expensive, difficult thing for some districts to try to maintain them for six months. Now we have a three-month retention period for them. So none of them are huge, but they're really just implementing all the changes that came from this last legislative session. So if you have any questions about any of them in particular, I will do my very best to answer. Otherwise, we'll be asking you to adopt them in January. All right. Thank you, Ms. Gladys. We are going to adjourn to executive session, and we will re reconvene after that. Read the time. time. It is end of section. That yeah. Sure. Sorry. A closed session of the board will now be held for matters on the matters contained in the notice for this meeting as authorized by Section 551-074 of Texas Open Meetings Act. Should the board determine that any final action, final decision, or final vote be required with regard to any matter considered in closed se such closed or executive meeting or session, or, then the, such final action, final decision, or final vote shall be either this public meeting upon the reconvening or at a subsequent public meeting. Closed session of the board is now at 624. The board is now in open session at 645. The next item on the agenda was the superintendent's evaluation that has been complete. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All right. We are adjourned. 645.